Um, so by the time you bring them on uh, candidate on site, you get a feeling that most likely they're um, qualified and competent. Um, so really what we're looking for is fit. Um, how well do you do we get along with you? Do you get along with us? Can we work together for a year? Because we want it to be a really great experience. And I think that if you can work well together, your personalities match that it's going to be a really great experience. Um, and then also, we really like to look at um, kind of how they do under pressure as far as presenting their case or, you know, do they do they um, does the candidate kind of lose lose their thoughts do they um, get really nervous like kind of give us an idea of how they might handle tough situations um, when they're on residency you know we're going to know about as much as we can about you on paper we're not going to know hardly anything about your personality how you interact how sociable you are are you going to be a good fit um, with our program and so we're looking more for um, you know, like emotional intelligence, um, how, how well you're able to speak to, to everyone. Um, Cause you can look amazing on paper and then not have a whole lot of social skills also. Mm -hmm. um, and then like, you're going to be a right fit for our program and you might not be a right fit for another program. And it has nothing to do with, um, the fact that the candidate's like a bad candidate, you just don't match that well with the program and you'd be better served someplace else. And so we're really trying to get to know the person for who they are. Yeah, I think, you know, we do, and I think a lot of PGY1 programs do group interview. I mean, not group interviews, but we, they bring a group in at a time. We're not interviewing you all at once, but, um, you know, you're being interviewed whether you realize it or not in all settings while you're there. So you should be on from the minute you walk in that door or maybe even before you walk in the door until you leave. You don't know who's observing you. And so some of those social interactions uh, are very telling at times and how they engage with other um, other applicants or other candidates that are there. Um, so even if it is a casual lunch, you are still being interviewed. Um, if you're walking on the tour for the program, you're still being interviewed. So I think what is surprising to me is sometimes people let their guard down and we want you to let your guard down in the sense that we want to see the true you. But I think some people forget they're on an interview temporarily may say something that doesn't come across as entirely appropriate or may overshare some things. And so I think that's where you get the true feel of who the people are. So you want to let down your guard enough that we see who you are, but you don't want to completely relax in the sense that, you know, you may say or do something that you later regret. As I said before, it's really important that the candidate is evaluating if our culture is going to be a fit for them as much as we are going to be a fit for the candidate um, and they're going to fit to us. So um, we're really looking for a candidate who is giving us answers that are somewhat vulnerable and transparent to who they are and not necessarily the answers that they think we want to hear. Um, we actually have quite a few questions in our interview process that are unexpected um, and that resident candidates can't plan for to try to get at some of that candor and an idea of that personality. We actually also use several different assessments and tools um, that we send to the candidate in advance to get an idea of of just who they are. You can't pass or fail them, but it helps us to kind of see how you approach problems and what um, what you might do under stress because that's what's going to really show us if we have the program bandwidth to support the residents should they match with us. Well, and I think that our candidates do ask um, our residents a little bit about that because they want to know what the residents experiencing. But when we have our lunch there, um, we want our staff to um, so to pharmacy technicians, our auditing team, um, kind of either a large amount of them either join at lunch or dinner. And so they have a chance to kind of ask people who aren't going to be their preceptors, like, do you like working here? Are you happy? Do you, you know, what do you do in the city? What do you do kind of for fun? Um, and it's kind of a, an easy way for the candidates to get a better sense of what's the work environment without the pressure of feeling like, they're asking their preceptor, are you gonna be nice to us? Um, you know, they, they have a better sense of gauging that. And, and that it's very rare that candidates take full advantage of that. And that tends to surprise us because um, 
it seems like if you're going on a job interview, those are questions that you would ask for a job interview. Um, when it's a residency, I think that so many candidates are concerned about putting the best foot forward so that they are ranked as high as possible, that maybe they don't take the opportunity to similarly vet out better how they would rank the program beyond just some of the academic um, or career considerations that they might have. Being on time, I've had many candidates that say it starts at 8 a.m. They're either walking in the door at 8 a.m. or maybe 8.02, 8.03, 8.05. Um, so that is the easiest thing. I always say to, you don't have to get there crazy early, but in my opinion, get there early enough so that someone's not sitting around waiting on you. Um, another thing is always have questions. I always find it very awkward when you sit there and we have a group full of preceptors and I say, these are gonna be your preceptors. What questions do you have? And then the candidates can't ask any questions. That's gonna be a long year. So I know that the candidate has questions so they can easily come prepared with questions um, that need to be answered. You know, I, 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 I want to see who the person is and I really wanna know, uh, get to know them. And so if they come off like really rehearsed like they've thought about like every question that, th that they've had and they're just giving a first answer, then that comes off as not very authentic. And so you're like, I, I wanted to get to know you and all I'm getting is what you think is the perfect response to this question. So we'll try to ask, you know, sp specific questions um, to just kind of get to know them better, give them the opportunity to tell us whatever they want three things that they want us to remember about them. Um, we'll go out to lunch and try to be um, less professional and just get to know them. I said, if you're really apprehensive and you're really just worried about making a good impression, you know, we can tell that. And sometimes that's okay. I mean, I think some of those social interactions and just be, being aware of your environment is easily fixable. Um, you know, engaging and interacting with the people that are around you um, you know, I think, you know, obviously some people, I mean, some people come in very nervous uh, and so, you know, they don't show their true selves and they don't answer things, um, you know, in a way that is helpful for us. So I think really thinking about how can I efficiently answer and give enough detail without spending too much time of the interview talking about, you know, this one question. Um, so I think that's fixable if you can try to practice your elevator speech of who you are, what you want to do, what you see in your future, what are your plans to get there? Because those questions are likely going to come up so you can kind of prepare for some of those. And the other things are just a lot of programs require a presentation and that may be a short 10 minute presentation, but really polishing your presentation skills and, um, you know, getting some practice in beforehand before you come. If, if you know your topic, usually a lot of people send it out in advance. Is that sometimes candidates don't use all aspects of the interview to their advantage. Um, we found candidates that during lunch times when they're supposed to be meeting with our staff or on their cell phones or don't engage with any of their team members or ask about them um, or, or about our community because you know we're in a rural community. So asking, well, what do you guys do here in your downtime or, or how do you like working here? It's very rare that we actually get questions that might help a candidate to better understand our organization um, and I'm sure a lot of it has to do with being nervous. It's an intimidating environment. Um, also we've had candidates that don't um, always mind their behaviors at the final dinner in the end of the evening um, and maybe are a little too open about what they enjoy doing. Knowing all the bars that they enjoy visiting, probably not the best discussion um, at length during a dinner, but being personable and discussing, you know, what you like to do for fun, that's always appropriate, but there's sort of a balance to it and you have to kind of recognize that, um, you know, you're with a variety of people who may not all enjoy going to bars on the weekends. And so you kind of have to mention it, but you don't want to then discuss for the next hour, all the different places you've been in all the different cities that kind of thing.